Welcome back to Caleb the Video Maker 2. This is the series of installing MySQL and PHP on DreamHost. So where are we exactly? We are in FTP through FileZilla and we're connected to our website. As you can see, I'm actually using the domain name phpmysqltutorial.dreamhosters.com. And you can see I'm connected to the website and we're actually going to create a PHP script that is going to connect to our database. So we already have index.php, but there's nothing really in it. So let's go ahead and edit it. I actually already have it open, so I'm just gonna slide over here. This is it, that's all we got. Well, we're actually gonna clear this out and I'm gonna teach you a little bit about PHP, but do keep in mind that this is not a PHP tutorial series by any means. The very first thing you're going to want to do is run a function, and that function is called MySQL uh, <laughs> MySQLi underscore connect. And then open parentheses, this thing is going to have four arguments. The first one is the host, the second one is the user, this third one is the password, and then the fourth one is the name of the database. So. Where do we get that information? Well, that is the same information that we used when we created our database. So I actually took a snapshot of it. Let me scroll over here. Here is all of my information. Although if you need to find yours, you can go into the panel, go to goodies, MySQL databases, and you can find most of your information here. You can find your database name, the user, and the host name. And then I put the password in here as the description so that way I didn't have to remember it. So all we gotta do is put those in exactly perfect. Don't mess anything up. <laughs> I'm just going to place where they go so that way I don't forget any. And then I'm gonna go back and fill them in. The first one I'm always going to do is the host because that's the one that determines whether we can connect at all. So comparing to this, we just probably can just copy this. Paste that in there. And then the next one is the username, which is right here. The third one is the password, which is right here. And finally, the fourth one, we need the database name. Now, all we have to do is go back to our website, and I'm gonna show you guys a classic mistake. So all we gotta do is go to domains, manage domains, and then we can visit our website. And it says, hello. Well, what the crap? I updated that file, but nothing happened. It's because we have to remember to go through FileZilla first. There we go. Upload it. Let it finish. Boom. Done. Now go back to the website. Do a refresh. And you can see the page is blank. So that could be good or that could be bad. <laughs> if it's blank because of a good reason, that means nothing bad happened and it's working. If it's blank for a bad reason, it means you have errors turned off and it just doesn't show you anything, even if there is something broken. So let's let's say that we have an incorrect website and we just put a uh, wrong website right here. Let's save it, upload it, and refresh. You can see we're getting errors. Now let's compare these errors to the ones with the username and password. And I'm going to mess up the username here. Go back refresh. Oh, got to upload it. <laughs> All right, access denied for user PHP MySQL tutorial. Oh. Now, this is a little more helpful to me because I know that I was actually able to make a connection to the host. I just have the wrong username, password, or database. So that makes debugging a little bit easier for me. So what you can get from this is that if your error looks like this, then the first thing you need to do is fix your host, not your username, your password, or your database. If you go in here and you're like, crap, my username's not right, you're wasting your time because you're not even making a connection to the thing at all. So it doesn't matter whether your username or password is right. <laughs> it's kind of like, imagine trying to sign in to YouTube, but you're actually not on YouTube. It, it would make more sense to go to YouTube before you try 
correcting your username and password. <laughs> I think you guys understand what I'm saying. So let's fix that, upload it, and refresh. No errors. So that means we are officially connected to the database. Now, if you guys are getting some errors, you can post them in the comments, and if I know the answer, I'll reply. Or if you guys have a similar error and you're able to help others, you can reply to people who have comment issues below, and um, that way we can help each other out. But just make sure that you look over this very carefully, that you got every single thing absolutely perfect on here. And also, I wanted to point out, this is not the same user and password that you use for FTP. If I go back to FileZilla, you can see I have Calcur2 with a password and I'm connecting to the website. It's not the same. In fact, though even the host isn't the same. On here, there's no MySQL, but here it's mysql.php sqltutorial.dreamhosters.com. So the host and the user and the password and then the additional database, they're all different. So don't get them confused with file transfer protocol. They're two separate things. That's basically all I have to say in this video now that we have a connection to the database. In the next video, we're going to actually display some information on the page from our database. So that one's gonna be fun because we're actually gonna finally do some real coding and making our first app, I guess you could say. <laughs> so thanks guys, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. What are we iterating over? We're iterating over each row and what is it we want to access within the row? We want to access the column or if you want to name it a little more specifically, you could say the field because that is an individual value for a column. And then within here, we could echo the field. Let's save it.